a heated battle over abortion and free speech. The Supreme Court weighs, in, weighs whether California can force pro-life pregnancy centers to post notices about abortion. California says its law is designed to keep women informed about their options, but hundreds of faith-based pregnancy centers say they're being singled out. KPIX5 political reporter Melissa Kane breaks down the high-stakes case. Melissa? Yeah, Liz, you know, it's a case about free speech, but the lawyers barely got a chance to speak today. The justices asking question after question, while outside the courthouse, protests on either side of the abortion debate. Now, the people we spoke to said it's too close to call, as California, once again, at the center of a Supreme Court battle. Certainly, when I uh, introduced the bill three years ago, we had no idea that it would become uh, the center of the fight that it is today. Assemblyman David Chu introduced the law being considered by the court today back in 2015. So I appreciate your consideration of AB 775, the Reproductive Fact Act. To understand the law, take a look at this website for the Fallbrook Pregnancy Resource Center. It shows an exam room, someone who looks like a nurse or doctor, and an ultrasound machine. But the center is not not licensed to perform medical procedures. We have in California over 370 fake health clinics uh, where the operators of these clinics have been deceiving pregnant women who come in uh, and some instances delaying their care. On January 1st, 2016, Assemblyman Chu's law took effect. It requires nonprofits providing pregnancy related services to post a notice telling patients that free or low cost abortions are available elsewhere. And places that are not licensed to provide medical procedures have to post a notice saying they're not licensed. Today, the court focused on two issues. First, does this law punish people based on their political viewpoint? Denise Harley is one of the attorneys on the team that argued against the law today. Was that the court was extremely concerned about the targeted nature of this law. Now, the law doesn't explicitly call out pro-life groups, but Justice Alito described it like this. If you have a law that's neutral on its face, but then it has a lot of crazy exemptions, and when you apply all the exemptions, what you're left with is a very strange pattern. And gee, it turns out that just about the only clinics that are covered by this are pro-life clinics. The second issue in today's hearing was whether the law is too much of a burden. Remember that unlicensed pregnancy centers have to post a notice on every ad. They are required to put in all of their advertisements this lengthy disclaimer in multiple languages. According to one pregnancy center, an ad like this now has to look like this. In Los Angeles, 13 languages are required. I work closely with former Attorney General Kamala Harris and now Attorney General uh, Javier Becerra, who is defending our law, to make sure that uh, it is within constitutional standards. Now, some other states require abortion providers to give patients information about alternatives, like adoption. So if the court in this case says California can't mandate speech that's pro-choice, other states may not be able to mandate speech that's pro-life. Of course, it all depends on the ruling, which we can expect by June. Melissa Kane, KPIX 5.